All right, a couple odds and ends here before I'm joined by my next guest, and this is a very important story. You want to talk about the Democrat persecution. If you're a Christian activist, we've got a great example and a story from a woman you've probably seen and heard of before, but um, they're about to send her to prison. And so we'll tell you that story coming up. But, um, you know, we talked about the 9-11 situation. Here's Jake Tapper. They're seething because Laura Loomer was on Trump Force One for his recent trip. <laughs> and so uh, an interesting angle to the coverage of that here from Jake Tapper in clip two. Actually traveling with some of these folks, conspiracy peddlers, we should note a veritable legion of doom of bigots and liars, perhaps none so depraved as this woman, Laura Loomer. Here she is getting off of Trump's plane before yesterday's debate. Just on Sunday, she posted an insanely, insanely racist message that if Harris, whose mom was an Indian immigrant, wins, quote, the White House will smell like curry and White House speeches will be facilitated via a call center, unquote. <laughs> On this 23rd anniversary of 9-11, we should also note Loomer posted last year that 9-11 was a, quote, inside job, unquote. Trump continues to bring this person along on his travels with, with him. Why? Now that's hilarious. The Legion of Doom. The Legion of Doom. Now, the tweet or the post from Laura Luma, uh, Loomer about the White House smelling like curry is just hilarious. But, I, you know, I, I find it funny when whoever it is on the left, CNN or even a political candidate, they want to sit here and act holier than thou and more righteous or like they have a better moral standard. These people knock boots with some of the most degenerate people in entertainment. They'll take an endorsement from, from Snoop Dogg or Eminem or any of these rappers that, that talk about drugging and beating women. They talk about killing police. I mean, give me a freaking break. Laura Loomer makes a joke about Indians cooking with curry and, and taking over call centers. Please. Please. With the, with the degeneracy that you guys have no problem associating with. And then they put on the screen, 9-11 was an inside job. They actually put that on the screen. So, win Laura Loomer. That's a total win for Laura Loomer. And for 9-11 truthers. But how about that, guys? Had you ever, conspiracy. Conspiracy peddlers. Conspiracy peddlers and the Legion of Doom are now on Trump's plane regularly. Have you ever, guys, have you ever, I'm a conspiracy peddler. Sounds a little more official or like, I don't know, is that supposed to be an insult? Is that a step down from a conspiracy theorist or a step up? I, where, a conspiracy peddler. You're a peddler in conspiracies. <laughs> oh my gosh, are you kidding me? I hate to see that. See, and this is what's sad, and look, I really don't care if Laura Loomer and Marjorie Taylor Greene, who I like both of them, uh, want to get into a cat fight, uh, that's fine. It, it really doesn't matter to me. But now it's the front story on Drudge. Are you kidding me? So I'm not going to tell Laura Loomer what to do if she wants to engage in this infighting and go after one of our best people in Congress and Marjorie Taylor Greene, then whatever. She's going to do what she wants. But, I mean, come on. They literally run a coup against Joe Biden. The Democrats literally run a coup against Joe Biden and install Kamala Harris and a social media spat before, b between Laura Loomer and Marjorie Taylor Greene is at the top of Drudge Report. So, ladies... Ladies, let's just put it aside for at least the next 55 days, can we? Can we just put it aside? I don't know why Laura would want to go after one of our best members of Congress right now, but again, she's going to do what she wants. That's at the top of Drudge after they run a coup on Joe Biden and doesn't even get a mention. Ouch. The state of the media. When... Kamala Harris and the Democrats and their friends in the state-run propaganda media tell you 
that Donald Trump will weaponize the government and Donald Trump will weaponize the DOJ against his opposition. Of course, we know that the exact opposite is true. Unfortunately, I know that personally, but perhaps my guest joining me now could be an even worse case. And in fact, it's so bad as Bevelyn Beatty Williams is about to join me to tell us her story, just to kind of give people a taste of how bad it actually is. Bevelyn, I had to get permission from my probation officer just to talk to you because part of my probation is I'm not allowed to talk to felons. And of course, you shouldn't even be a felon and I should not be on probation. And yet here we are and now you yourself are facing jail time. Now, for people, in case you're not familiar with Bevelyn's story, she can tell you, but she's been a right-wing activist, a Christian activist, a truth teller for some years on the streets. She's had many viral videos. And so now they're going after you. They're putting you on the list as a felon, and now they're trying to put you in jail. So for people that aren't familiar with your story, we'll roll some of your more successful, let's say, protests, and, and then... Just, just tell the people that what's led to this point of now the Democrats trying to weaponize the justice system against you and put you in jail. I mean, it, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Um, they're treating me like a full on criminal. I mean, they sentenced me to 41 months in federal prison with also two years of supervised release. Um, they indicted me back in December 2022, I think for a Jesus Matters rally that I did in 2020 of July, I think July 2020. Um, I was not arrested at this rally. There were police present both days. Um, there were no charges pressed against me. There was no type of legal action on a state level taken against me for this rally. And then, then, and then actually a year, I think in 2021, after they got Trump out, uh, Letitia James, the same one who indicted Trump, also, uh, I mean, sued Trump, also sued me. She sued me for an injunction uh, to keep me from going in front of the abortion clinic, the Planned Parenthood abortion clinic. And they got an injunction against me for uh, 30 feet, which means I can't, I'm not allowed in front of that building. I have to be 30 feet away from the building or I will get a $5,000 fine. And it was for that Jesus Matters rally. Um, and so, you know, I, my, my legal team just said, hey, let's just go ahead and settle it. I, I was working with Thomas Moore at the time. They were like, you know, just settle without admission of guilt unless you're not even living in New York anymore. You live in Tennessee. Just go ahead and just settle. And so I did. I, I took their advice. I don't think we understood how much these people were out for blood, in my personal opinion. And so what they did was they took that exact same case. They had Letitia James come after me on a state level and then they had uh, the federal government come after me for the same two day rally on a federal level and they indicted me. I mean, this is so crazy, the amount of time that you're facing. I mean, maybe like a slap on the wrist, like a week or something, even if they wanted to go after these ridiculous charges. How is it that they're looking at years? Where are they getting years in prison? So let me tell you what they did. When they indicted me, I had two charges. I had conspiracy of face and face, right? I went to trial. I, they couldn't get me on conspiracy. So I was found, the jury, for whatever reason, they just didn't have enough evidence. Well, and let's to, just quickly, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's important. People understand the face, what you're talking about, face is, they say that you're blocking entrance to an abortion clinic. Did you actually stop anybody from ever going into an abortion clinic? The, both rallies were recorded. People watch, thousands of people watch these two day, this two day rally happen. I never stopped anyone from entering that abortion clinic. I've never put my hands on anyone. I have, people know me as an activist because I go live. People have watched me and taken this journey with me of life and activism. And I have never shown myself being an violent, aggressive person, period. Now, am I, do I have a loud mouth? Am I uh, 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 direct? Am I candid? Yes, but violent, threatening, that's not who I am. But what they were doing was, so basically at this rally, right? This woman claims that I, I was leaning my back on the door and uh, 
I slammed her hand in the door while my back was on the door. And so basically, when they found me guilty, they were basically saying that beyond reasonable doubt, I went there specifically that day to slam her hand in the door. And it is just a blatant lie. Now, I wasn't found guilty on conspiracy because they just I, they just really didn't have enough evidence to find me guilty on conspiracy. But what they did was on my sentencing day, they basically sentenced me for conspiracy along with base, even though I was found not guilty on wow. conspiracy. Wow. Wow. You know, that's virtually what they did to me and, and others as well. And I, I don't know the negotiations that your attorneys were in with the prosecutors or any of that. But they basically did the same thing to us, and they said all these things that they were going to agree to, and they said, oh, it's not going to make it without speech, and oh, we're not going to push for jail time. And then they got in front of the judge, and they said, nope, it's all about what he said, and we want him to go to jail. But, I mean, but I mean, really, your situation is worse. You're facing years. I, I had to do a couple months. Uh, it's all political persecution. So right. I, I, my mind is just blown here. My mind is just blown. If you would have ran somebody over in a car and you were an illegal immigrant, they'd probably let you out the next day. You wouldn't face any jail time. I mean, right. clearly there's some agenda here, specifically when it comes to pro-life activists, because there's other examples that we have here. But see, this seems to be the pattern is they don't get the charges that they want, but then they still sentence you based off of the charge. Like, so they'll file five charges, one will stick, but then they'll sentence you as if all five stuck. Right. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you the honest truth. Systematic racism, it does exist. But people need to understand that the people accusing us of systematic racism are the ones that are doing it. They have a bad habit of projecting what they do on others, i.e. Russia, Ukraine, what they accused Trump of with Russia, they were actually doing with Ukraine, right? So what you have to understand is, uh, the reality is, I'm the worst person to be standing against abortion and Christian activism because I'm a black woman, okay? I don't fit the narrative that they usually use to get their agenda. Usually we're the scapegoats that they use to get in office, get in power, they hail us and then they nail us. Look at what they're doing right now with the illegal immigrants. Uh, the black Americans of this nation, we're little to nothing right now. And they've done this multiple times when it came to drug crime. When it, I mean, look at what Biden did to the black community in the 90s with the crimes. Look at what Kamala did when she was a prosecutor. She literally is called Kamala lock a nigga up. She's known for that. So now you get a woman like me, who's not a token, who's actually a stand up Christian. And even though I'm a black woman, my Christian values take head over my color and I have a strong mouth and I'm declaring the truth. I'm not going around spearing a bunch of lies. I'm telling the truth and I'm the living proof of that truth. So of course you got a couple of months, you're the typical white conservative that they can just deem crazy and say you're just a conspiracist, you don't know what you're talking about. But me, I'm the living proof of what they do. They need to put me under the jail. That sentencing was a lynching. It was a lynching. And that this is, I'm learning, this is what the real racism is, what we face in America. It's with the Democrats, it's with the left, it's with the Marxists and the communists. They hate us, but they use us to get their agenda done. Was your judge white? Yes, of course, and she was a woman. Well, you know, it, it's funny that I'm not hearing a peep from any Black Lives Matter groups or any liberal activists that wanna prop themselves up and feel good about themselves for standing up for black Americans. And you'll hear constantly about black men being incarcerated at higher rates than white men. Kamala Harris was guilty of that for, you know, let's say petty minor drug offenses, which I actually don't disagree with. I'm against the war on drugs, but it's funny, the silence in your case. I find it funny, right. the silence in your case, when your case is much more egregious. Your case is much more egregious. Now, I'll, I'll get into the current legal situation you're in right now, but I'll just ask you flat out. Have any activist groups reach out to you? Have any activist groups tried to support your cause? No, other than other than your, I mean, LifeSite News, 
other than the news groups that have been stepping with me to help make people aware of this, actual quote unquote activist groups that get funding to be active for a cause have not reached out to me, unfortunately, except for like LifeSite News and you know the pro-life news, people like that. But no, most of the uh, activist groups that are even in agreement with me, they haven't reached out, it's been silent. Because um, the thing is this, their focus is fundraising. And so they will do what they need to do and put up what needs to be put up on social media to get the funds. As for me, that was never my intentions and it still isn't. I do what I do because I understand the detriment that we're dealing with in this nation. I, I had three abortions myself, Owen. You understand what I'm saying? I know what it's like to live in a ghetto neighborhood, be attacked, live, live you're, you're living in an environment where everything is for you to die. You understand what I'm saying? And so my mission and my heart, it's, it's, it's because of Christ in me and it's because I know the truth. It's not because I just wanna fundraise and make some money. And so I feel like sometimes I don't fit the narrative that they need. I'm not the clean cut girl that they need. But at the same time, it's just like, you know what? After all of this, it, it shouldn't matter. It should be about waking up and people realizing like, wait a minute, the government is really, this is tyranny. We're in the middle of tyranny. It's time for the American people to stop being selfish and wake up. Well, so much of what you just said is, I mean, it's it's penetrating, it's powerful, and I, I want to respond to some of it. I'm upset because I agree with you, and what we've seen, I think, from the pro uh, pro life right recently has been a bit exposing. That it seems like really some of them are kind of in it just for the big funds that they get. And I mean, I, I don't even, I, I'm not looking for infighting here, right? But I mean, I, I could name the names. I mean, we're talking about some of the biggest names in the pro life movement that that have made lots of money, lots. Um. None of them have profiled you. No. No, I mean, you are clearly, in, in, in my opinion, I'd say you are clearly the biggest case of discrimination against a pro-life activist. I don't think anybody's case measures up to yours. I mean, there have been others, and I'd have to look at the rap sheet. I, I think you're facing the most time. But there have been others that went to prison for protesting outside of abortion clinics. There's a handful now, unfortunately, that you join that are facing prison time. I think that your sentence is the longest at this point. And so no, it's, it's one more woman that's in jail right now. She got 57 months. But check this out. She was a white liberal. But she was she's she's one of them people that was like a pro vegan. They're like so she was so vegan in that way that she was just like, if I'm not gonna kill a animal, why are y'all killing babies? So she made some type of sense. So they really gave her the hammer hammer because she's supposed to be in their camp. And on top of that, she got tried in DC. Mind you, my judge took precedence from the people in DC. DC got handled like dogs. They were remanded. They were not able to fight their case from the outside. As soon as they were sentenced, they were taken in. Um, and that's it. And they got the most time. That woman got 57 months, and then I'm right after her. And, and just to kind of put a little more gravity to this, <laughs> I mean, folks, as soon as I heard about Bevelyn's story, I was immediately like, okay, I got to cover this. Again, I, I had to get in touch with my probation officer just to do this interview. Uh, that's how important this was to me. But, you know, here, here's my problem. And again, I, I don't want to name names. I could go down the list. I think people know who it is. But, you know, they'll share the Bevelyn Beatty video of the black woman protesting against Black Lives Matter. They'll show the Bevelyn Beatty, uh, Beatty video, Bevelyn Williams video, when it's a viral video and they want to get impressions and they want to get their followers up. And that's all good. And now yeah. here you are facing prison and they're not giving you a platform and they're not giving you a profile. I mean, you, you, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like you're putting it all on the line. You're now the you're now one of the many faces of discrimination against pro-life activists. And yet the people who have literally made millions of dollars 
off the pro-life movement won't even profile you. I, I, I got to say, that's, I mean, for you, it's probably more heartbreaking. But to me, it's just like, my goodness, that is, honestly, it's shameful and it's almost unethical. You know, Owen, you get it because, you know, you guys are going through it like I am. You understand what I'm saying? I feel like a lot of, unless you are in our shoes and you're really feeling the attacks, you're not going to get it. But this is what I will say. All of this time, we wanted Roe versus Wade to go back to the states, and it finally did. And people that you thought would be happy about this thing were actually not, because it was no longer a pivot for fundraising. I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna do you one up. When Trump got in, Trump removed this. Like, remember there was like a separation between uh, not for profits to where you can't really speak on politics because of Lyndon Bain Johnson. He was the one who implemented that. Trump removed that. No one said nothing. There was crickets when Roe versus Wade got overturned. There were crickets when that little, I think, stipulation between being a non for profit and dealing with politics was overturned by Trump. Because the reality is, it was people's safe space. It was your safe space to not have to deal with politics and just get on your pulpit and preach to protect yourself and not have to pick a side, right? And it was a safe space for you to say, hey, look at them. They're committing abortion. Give us money to help the fight. But you didn't really want the fight. You got It's a lot of talk about the fight and it's a lot of people using it as a machine to make money, but they're not really there to try to find a solution for the fight. And let me just say this. That two-day rally, you know why they want my head for that two-day rally? Because in one day alone, they didn't mention the other day, they said in one day alone, 150 appointments were scheduled to murder babies. None of them showed up. That's why they wanted my head. I was criticized. I was ridiculed. I was the loudmouth Christian that people did not want to associate with because I wasn't doing it the proper way. Yet, I did what people fundraise for to get 150 babies in a year. We did in a day. I'm a solutionist. I'm not here to keep pushing a problem, pushing an issue so I can milk you. I don't got time for that. There's a real problem at hand. There's babies being killed and it has to be addressed. And now what you are seeing in this hour is individuals who are really part of the solution and individuals that are wanting to milk the problem. Well, I, I know you have more legal fights ahead of you. And if I get the situation wrong, you can correct me. But it's my understanding you're, you're set to turn yourself in next month. You do have an appeal process going. You're trying to fight to be released on appeal. Unfortunately, it's probably unlikely knowing how frothing at the mouth uh, they are right now against abortion activists. But you are fighting to have a release uh, pending your appeal. And then if they do decide not to give you that, then it's going to be a process even when you're waiting in there for your appeal. Now, folks, Bevelyn, I was talking to her the last couple of days. She never asked me to share her, her, her donation site. We have put it on the screen. I know how expensive these legal bills are, especially with these battles that are ongoing for such a long time, years in the making. It just never stops. So, again, I put it on the screen. I said we're going to plug it. GiveSendGo.com slash Bevelyn B.D. Williams is at the bottom of the screen. I, I, I pray to God you don't spend a day in prison. I, I, I hope that they release you upon your pending appeal, and then you can be victorious there. Uh, but you need to have the legal support to do it. So, folks, again, the link is at the bottom of the screen. GiveSendGo.com slash Bevelyn B.D. Williams. And, you know, quickly, too, thank God for Give, Send, Go the great folks over at Give, Send, Go, because if you tried to fundraise on the other fundraising sites, they'd probably just block you. They probably just wouldn't even let you go there. Um, so uh, before I get into something really powerful that you said before that I think is another issue that we can use to kind of be successful in changing people's minds, did I get the current legal situation accurate? Yeah, you did. That's basically the process. So you said something, and, and this has kind of been the thought process in my head too. Every time I hear liberal Democrats complaining about the education system and the lack of funding and all this other stuff, you know, it's ironic, A, it's ironic that it's always in Democrat-run cities where they seem to have the problems with that. That's ironic. But, you know, he here's my response. In these cities where you complain about the lack of funding, are there more schools or are there more abortion clinics? Are there more Planned Parenthoods or are there more schools? And who's getting more federal money, the Planned Parenthood clinic or the schools? 
Bevelin, I don't think they would like the answers to those questions. No, they wouldn't. No, let me tell you something right now. Planned Parenthood, after expenses, they don't pay taxes because they are 501c3, they're exempt from taxes. After expenses, they clear 40 billion a year. Do you understand the type of power you have when after paying off all of your employees and your building expenses, you have $40 billion to play with afterward? Do you understand how big of a beast that is? But then on top of that, they still want federal funding as well. They, they want abortion, they, you know what they want? They don't even want, they want the government to become the client. They want abortions on demand where the taxpayer pays them for the abortion. Do you, if they're clearing this now, okay? And the federal government through socialism, socialism hasn't become their full blown client. Could you imagine the amount of money they would make? I'm, I'm gonna break it down to you like this, Obamacare, Obamacare, was when Obama created this health care that made the federal government the client. The people got their health care that the federal government paid for. So the doctors, whomever could charge whatever they want because the government was gonna pay for it. Obama walked out of that White House, I think 40, 40 million stronger from the amount of money he got. If you think that was a big kahuna, You've seen nothing. Planned Parenthood is literally the Goliath of America. The amount of money that they have, the amount of pockets they've greased, it is it's hard for your mind to fathom. I'm nothing. I'm a drop in the bucket for them. And you know what? Let me tell you something. They laugh at us Christians. They laugh at us because we have to scout scrabble. I will never forget Sonia Massey, who technically was killed because they do that every year around election year. They try to kill a black woman. Right to, to to get people going, I watched. I saw her GoFundMe in a week. She had half a million dollars, half a million went past the goal. Us Christians, they're watching us fight against each other, scrabble to put food on our tables, scrabble to get support while we're tearing each other down, and they're over there building an empire on innocent blood babies. And about to throw and about to throw you one of the leading voices under the jail, Bevelyn Williams. Everybody should go to InfoWarsPhone.com right now, InfoWarsPhone.com. They have all the solar panels, all the charging stations, all the best sat phones, all the best sat radios, all the best equipment at the best prices, and they support the broadcast. InfoWarsPhone.com. I think it's a default move to do this. It's, it, it's an absolute essential. Uh, and it is it is so important to get ready. And I'm telling myself that if there's an EMP attack, your cell your cell phone's just nothing but a brick, right? And I know that even in the law enforcement part of it, that when people are uh, you know run, run their phone, they can turn their phone off, and for 72 hours, somebody in our group can ping that phone and track that phone for 72 hours. So you're not off the grid. So make sure you get your Faraday sleeve. Have a sat phone as a backup. If you're concerned about secure messaging, the black phone will secure end-to-end -end encryption. Everybody should go to InfoWarsPhone.com right now. All right, closing out here with Bevel and B.D. Williams. You know, it's sad. You'll hear the Democrats talk about, and, and it's all just political propaganda, but the Democrats, oh, separating children from their family at the borders. Well, they have no problem separating Bevelyn Williams from her family at all. Couldn't care less about that. It's just all political propaganda. But, you know, I think, Bevelyn, it's, what's unfortunate is that most people, and, and this is what's so frustrating, I think, about the activist left, especially when it comes to them, you know, posturing themselves as social justice heroes for standing up for black rights and all this other stuff, but then they're pro-abortion. I wonder if they even know what Planned Parenthood was originally intended for. Uh, I mean, the entire intention of Planned Parenthood with Margaret Sanger was, by her own words, to eviscerate the black population. I mean, they set up Planned Parenthoods in black communities because they didn't want black people. And so it's ironic that you sit here and you see all these left-wing protesters propping themselves up. Oh, we're fighting for social justice and we're fighting for black people. And then they love Planned Parenthood. 
an institution that was literally set up to kill black people. I mean, I know trying to get in here and expose all the the idiosyncrasies of of the the liberal logic is like banging your head up against a wall. But yet here you are. Here you are about to get thrown under the prison for standing up against probably the most evil institution that's not officially a government institution. I mean, I guess really it is technically. And and here they are. They're going to throw you under the jail and nobody comes to your defense. No marches, no interviews on CNN. No, I mean, again, the truth is in the pudding. The Democrat Party is the party of the racists. They've hated us from the beginning. They fought for us to stay slaves. They hung us when we voted Republican. Uh, they, I mean, she would campaign to the KKK. The American Eugenic Society was created to destroy us, the black race. You know, Darwinism. Darwinism didn't come to explain how man got here. Darwinism was to explain how black people got here, monkeys. And what breaks my heart is that us as a people, we've focused so much more on culture that we're not realizing we're falling for the very plan. What did Lyndon Bain Johnson say? He gave us welfare. He made it irrelevant for our fathers to be in a home. And he said, I will give those niggas enough. I'll give them enough, not too much, but just enough that they will be voting Democrat for the next 200 years. It is the Democrat policies that have removed the fathers from the home, that have brought effeminate culture to the black community. Now men in our community are cutting their penises off while they can't even take care of their kids. We are killing each other in the street, yet they're saying defund the police. We can barely have a picnic without somebody dying. And if the black on black crime, even to get started with it, are you kidding? It's such a heartbreaking thing to watch. And you know, for these liberals that don't know any better because of indoctrination, it's time to wake up. There's no more excuses. You are literally claiming that you care about us, but you're supporting blatant racism and genocide against the black community. And I am the living witness. I am not violent. I do not have a, a overly extensive background, maybe petty crime, but never nothing crazy. You know what I mean? I have never, even when I did petty crime, I've never been sentenced to time in jail. Maybe probation, maybe a fine. 10 years later with the big old 10 year gap in between, they gave me three and a half years with two years supervised release because of what I stand for. It was racist, period. Bevelyn Beatty Williams, uh, again, folks, help her in her legal fight. Gibsongo.com slash Bevelyn Beatty Williams. The link is on the bottom of the screen. But if people just want to stay up to date on the latest developments or, or you know, any other statements that you're making, where is the best place to follow for updates there? I'm on Facebook. Just look up Bevelyn Beatty Williams on Facebook. And on my donation site, you can connect with at wellministries.org. All of those links are on that site. You can connect with me on Facebook. And then you have my uh, ministry page at wellministries.org. You can write me a letter. You can email me. Um, you can reach out for support. And also, yeah, just anything you need, you can get it there. Would you like people, if, if you do end up being incarcerated, would you like people to write you letters? Yeah, if they did, they would send them to my ministry and my husband would pack them up and send them to me. Um, but I'm trusting God that I don't. Listen, Owen, okay? Respectfully, I'm too cute to be sitting in jail. If I have to go, I will preach that gospel. But a sister like her nails done, I like to take bubble baths. I'm really not trying to go to jail. Now, if I do go though, I will say this, there's gonna be a lot of souls in jail safe, but I'm really not trying to go y'all. Like I really, who wants to go to jail? I don't have a piece about being in jail. And it's not because I haven't went to jail for the gospel before I have. I've done that, been there, done that. I don't want to go because I just don't want the satisfaction of the powers that be to just think that they can do harm to God's people and just get away with it. You know, I feel like it's so unjust. Yeah. So I'm it just is. praying. Bevelyn, thank you for your time today. God bless. Godspeed. I'll be following this closely. Thank you, Owen. God bless you. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I, I think that, I mean, not just for the sake of, of Bevelin, as I see as an innocent woman facing jail time, what she says is powerful. I mean, aside from having to come on here and just defend her, her case, which is an easy one to me, uh, I mean, what she says is powerful, and that's why they want her in jail. They want to shut her up. So we're going to share that entire interview. It's going to be on Infowars.com. It's going to be on Bandot Video. I'll probably post the whole thing on my ex account as well. Uh, everything she says there is true. And, you know, I, I elected to not take the gloves off with, with some of these far-right pro-life grifters that I think got exposed in, in the last couple of months. And, and she kind of she kind of leaned into that a little bit more there. But I, I'll tell you this. If, if some of the leading voices in the pro-life movement who have made millions of dollars with their activism are not going to cover her story or platform her, I think I will name the names. And it's kind of a hard thing to do because I don't really do this stuff, but it's like I'll name the names and then I'll tell people to never donate to their causes ever again. Because if you're not going to support the people that put their lives on the line while you sit in your mansions making millions and living on social media and doing mainstream media interviews, and it feels bad because I don't want, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm against abortion. But you, you, you're really exposing yourself if you don't cover Bevelin's story and you don't come to her defense now. You're exposing yourself. And I, and I will make sure people know who you are and that they never donate another dime to your groups that have made you millionaires. So I'll just leave it at that. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, let's kind of buffer between that now and then the rest of the show with I Got News coming up. Jay Dyer taking over in the fourth hour. We do just have some political news, some government news we'll get into with Mike Johnson cowering out again. Ron Paul and Elon Musk uh, teaming up for just common sense economic policies. We've got some other cases of Trump derangement syndrome here that are going on as well. Um... You know, we did talk some geopolitical news. Maybe we'll, we'll have time to delve into some of those developments here before we sign off as well. I think we've properly covered the Haitian migrant story and all the angles on that. So I think we'll be able to get everything off the desk before Jay Dyer takes over coming up here in just about half an hour. Uh, now, I have to tell you, You've probably seen it if you've been watching the Alex Jones show this week or even today. Alex has talked about it. Um, we used to sell a lot of apparel at InfoWarsStore.com. We, we still sell our great supplements there. Uh, a lot of those top-selling, top-rated supplements are on sale. I encourage you to get them for your own health and wellness. But we don't really sell the apparel anymore. A lot of people liked our T-shirts so you can now get Alex Jones InfoWars apparel at thealexjonesstore.com. And then when you purchase the apparel at thealexjonesstore.com, you will get an entry into a raffle to win probably the coolest truck I've ever seen in my life. And this thing happens to be stationed um, at the studio. I think, I think, I think Alex may have taken it up to Dallas or moved it since, I don't know. It, it was, it was here the other day and he was filming with it. He might've taken it up to Dallas or they might've moved it to a garage, but it was, it was here the other day when he, they were shooting some of this video. And so honestly, the video here doesn't not do this thing justice. This thing is like a freaking mountain. I'm telling you, th this truck is like ludicrous. And you can get 
your entry to win this truck when you go to Alex Jones Store dot com and make a purchase so uh totally cool totally cool drive to sell some merchandise and and have an entry to win that truck so you got all kinds of new shirts the alex jones store.com and again you get entered in a raffle to win that truck it's 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 probably closer to a mountain than it is a truck but, man, that, that's one of the coolest trucks I've ever seen. Probably the coolest truck I've ever seen. And the video doesn't do it justice. I'm telling you, this thing is just, it's, <laughs> it's ridiculous, folks. And actually, I mean, that photo actually does kind of, you notice how Alex, his head barely even makes it to the top of the uh, engine block there? Yeah. I'm telling you. This thing is, I mean, those wheels are, uh, they're double the size you think they are. This thing is just ridiculous. So, you go to alexjonesstore.com, you get a piece of InfoWars apparel, and then you get entered to win the raffle. All right. Let's start to pick it up and put it down. Here's a little buffer for you, though. Let's just do a little buffer. This is a, uh, well, a tranny. It's what it appears to be. It's kind of a mystery these days, but it appears to be a tranny. And a man starts asking political questions the tranny goes full Trump derangement syndrome. Man, was this a familiar sight in clip nine? Get the f out of my face now! Ooh, that was, now! That was very rude of you. Get the f out of my face! Do you want to go to jail, sir, ma'am? I don't really know what to call you. No You're way. done, There's man. No I'm done. Get the in police, you just insulted me. Well, listen here, pal. I mean, huh, you are gonna go Shit. to jail. Shit. And I could tell the police to get you. I'm vegan, so don't say that. Listen. You told me he, man. You really get the. F out of my way right now okay yeah yeah we'll do that you do not have a release i will sue you you're gonna sue him don't sue him man because we're trying to just i don't have a you do not have a release if you f***ing post this i will destroy you i will destroy you just keep going on i got my crew with me now i got my crew yeah yeah what's up Woo! who won who's next all right I, I feel like I got to collaborate with this guy. I, I'm not sure who this guy is. I, I feel like it has to happen. I have to collaborate with that guy. Um, so if we have a large radio audio audience here, if you're hearing that, I, I, I need to explain to you what's going on. If you're hearing the guy screaming, you're like, oh, why is this guy screaming? It's supposed to be a woman. It's a, it's a man that's, you know, the transgender. Uh, you got to see this guy uh, with ridiculous fake breasts. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, dude. <laughs> what are you doing? I mean, it's actually, it really is hilarious. I mean, can you imagine? Did you ever do that thing? I'm sure, you know, you, 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 you put like balloons in your shirt. You make it look like you've got big boobs. I, that's what this guy looks like. He looks like a kid doing like a prank or something, or he looks like a kid at a, like a water balloon fight and, and puts big water balloons in, under the shirt. Like, you know, it's a funny thing. Like, Oh, look, I have boobs. I, I, that's how ridiculous <laughs> this guy's fake breasts are. Okay. And he's running around screaming. Oh my gosh. That is ridiculous. But then what is that deal at the end there? I don't know where all these guys come from. I guess he's at a university. And then there's like 20 black guys that show up and they're standing by. They look like students. And then all of a sudden they're standing behind the reporter who's also a white dude. And he's like, yeah, what's up now? <laughs> what led to that? What is going on in the world? This is insane. Threatens to rip off the jacket. My goodness, liberals are just, uh, their brain is broke, you know. It's really too bad. They've just, their brain is just completely broke. I mean, are those not the most ridiculous plastic breast implants you've ever seen? Whatever plastic surgeon you went to, sir, <laughs> that's uh, not fooling anybody. Okay. Weatherman. Suffers case of Trump derangement syndrome after Trump flag passes behind him while live on air. Oh, my goodness. He couldn't handle 
He couldn't handle the fright. He could not handle the fright of a Trump flag, and he just goes completely crazy while covering the hurricane. Francine. Yeah, it's tough. It's hard. He has a list. Crazed Kathy Griffin claims Trump will target her and other comedians one by one. You know, part of this is like projection, and then another part of it is almost like stolen valor in a way. And, and I'm not, obviously, I'm not comparing this to the people like Tim Walls who lie about their military service. But it, it's this idea like Kathy Griffin wishes she was a rogue. Kathy Griffin wishes she was a rebel. Kathy Griffin wishes in a way that she was cool enough and cutting edge enough to actually be a target of the government or the deep state. She's not. Bevelyn Williams is. Owen Schroyer is. Alex Jones is. Not Kathy Griffin. Oh my God, what'd they do to her? Holy, sh holy smokes. What are, you know, this is like evidence of demon possession right here. When you try to butcher your body so that you look like a demon. I don't know what, I, I'd never seen that before. I don't know what Kathy Griffin has done to her face, but she looks like she's out of a horror film. That's like a horror film villain. Like if that was charging at children, it'd, it'd be like, that'd be a damn good horror movie. If you put a knife in Kathy Griffin's hand and then she's charging at children, it's like, my God, that's like, that's holy smokes. You ever seen the movie uh, Barbarian? That's like, she's like the barbarian in that movie. Oh, my God. All right, uh, Kathy starring in a new horror film. Kathy, we're ready for hair and makeup. Oh, my God. You don't even, she doesn't even need hair and makeup. She just shows up out of bed. So, no, Kathy, you're not on a list. You're not a target. You're not cutting edge. You're not cool. You're not even funny. And I guess you wish you were cool. I guess you wish you were actually anti-establishment, but you're not. You are the establishment. And then the establishment did something to your face that probably cannot be undone. All right, you've got Elon Musk and Ron Paul teaming up to stop government overspending. And this stuff is so obvious. We'll see. We'll see. Should Trump get into office? I, I, I do think he will. I, I think he wins. I think he, right now, I think he gets 270 electoral votes. That's how close I think it's going to be. Elon Musk on a government efficiency spending team, probably team up with Ron Paul even, even. But so I guess we're not going to be doing research on shrimp running on treadmills or gay mice or any of that stuff anymore or gay lobsters, whatever the hell else they got going on. Yeah, we spent hundreds of millions of dollars on on gay animal tests and, and shrimp on treadmills. I mean, just ridiculous stuff. Anthony Fauci puts puts poor little innocent puppies' heads into a box with flesh-eating flies. That sick freak. So I guess all that spending would come to an end. Speaking of spending, it looks like Mike Johnson is going to just endlessly fund the government. He's not even going to try to attach the SAVE Act to it. Th this guy sucks, man. He really, he ended up being worse than Kevin McCarthy. Mike Johnson withdraws government funding bill, which includes SAVE Act just hours before scheduled vote. So he's going to bring it back, and he's probably going to take the he, he, I think I think Johnson is trying to fund the government is what I see him doing here. Time will tell. But he wasn't going to get the votes from the Republicans because he wasn't going hard off hard enough on the Save Act. And I guess he figured he wasn't going to get votes from Democrats because the Save Act was in there. So he was set for a failed vote because he couldn't even get the Republicans to vote with him. That's how that's how how bad of a leader he is, even with the SAVE Act in there. So he pulled it because he wasn't going to get it funded. So I, I, I think he's going to come back with a bill that he's going to try to get everybody to vote for, or, or he thinks he can get the majority. My guess is he's going back to work to find out how he can get enough votes to, to get the continued resolution without the SAVE Act. That's what I think. That's what I think he's doing. And that'll be kind of the final bow, I think, for, for Mike Johnson. Letting everybody know where he stands. He's a big government guy. He's a uniparty guy. And
and he stabbed conservatives in the back. He did, he did nothing. He did nothing for conservatives. He did nothing for Trump supporters. He never used the power of the purse, the power of the House, the power of the Speaker's gavel. And now he's going to renegotiate the continued resolution and probably drop the SAVE Act. Now, I hope I'm wrong, but he, he, should, have been, he should have been going in front of the media talking about the SAVE Act and shaming the Democrats for not wanting to vote it. Instead, he goes and hides like a Howard, uh, hides like a coward and is refabricating how he's going to get the government funded. Just shut it down, Mike. We don't like the government, but I guess he's a big fan. Here's what I was talking about earlier. Missouri Supreme Court allows abortion access amendment on the ballot. So the Democrats are trying to get abortion on as many ballots as they can to drive out the vote. So they know Kamala Harris can't win. They can't, the Democrats can't win with Kamala Harris alone. They need abortion on the ballot. They need abortion on the ballot. So they're just trying to get any big, small ballot measure, whatever they can do. It's just any, any abortion issue. Get it on the ballot, drive out the vote, and then hopefully they vote for uh, Harris at the same time. New Mexico, this is just, I mean, the abortion business, folks, the business of killing babies, and their number one client is a Democrat. New Mexico starts building abortion clinic to serve neighboring states. They're building abortion clinics right on the border so that you can come from Texas or Oklahoma and kill your baby. The business of killing babies and Democrats have business booming. I mean, is that not the most unethical? I just, I can't even, we've already covered it. Election officials warned that widespread problems with the U.S. mail system could disrupt voting. Yeah, you mean uh, it'll be election night and Trump will be winning and then they'll say, oh, we just found 500 bajillion votes for Kamala Harris in a mail truck. It was just delayed. But now we have the votes. And Harris wins Michigan and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. That's, that's the translation of that for you. In case, just in case, just in case they need that. In case Kamala's trailing in Pennsylvania, they'll find a mail truck and it'll have all the votes they need. Oh, it was just delayed. That's all. No big deal. Nothing to see here, America. I don't know if they'll get away with it this round, folks, but they're certainly putting it in their deck of cards to play.